This time we have come to the picturesque medieval market town of Arundel in West Sussex, oozing history with its wonderful historic buildings, cathedral, lanes and cute shops. With the beautiful views along the River Arran and the majestic castle that dominates the skyline, it really is a wonderful place for a day trip to soak up England of the past. Join us as we walk around this lovely town and explore some of its history. Arundel is situated in the beautiful South Downs, just 20 minutes from the coast and an hour and a half by train from London, Victoria. Trains run every 30 minutes and a return ticket will cost around £55. The main large car park is opposite the castle and is £5 to park for the day. It is from here that we'll start our walkabout. This is the visitor entrance to the castle which we'll visit in next week's video so do subscribe so you don't miss it. The small Arundel Museum is right beside the car park and charts the history of the town through the ages with some informative exhibits and interactive areas for the children. The entry fee is reduced if you've already visited the castle. The River Arran looks gorgeous today in the sunny weather Running through the town, it was an important strategic part of the creation of Arundel, becoming an inland port. Whilst not used for transporting goods and people anymore, there are plenty of leisure activities taking place like kayaking, stand-up paddleboarding and canoeing. It does have a strong tidal flow, so you do need to be careful. Interestingly, grey mullet used to be easily caught and eaten from the river, and residents born in Arundel are proudly called mullets. The term has been in use for over 200 years. Arundel started its life as a Saxon village and grew into a town by the time the Normans came to conquer England in 1066. They quickly built a castle on the hillside, firstly of wood and later rebuilt in stone. It was there to protect the prospering settlement and deter attacks. For centuries the castle has been the seat of the Duke of Norfolk. It was extensively rebuilt in the years 1890 to 1903. On the riverbanks beside Arundel Bridge, we see the remains of the Dominican Priory. The Black Friars, or the Dominican Friars, came to Arundel in the 13th century. Unlike monks that withdrew from the world, the Friars came to preach and positioned themselves close to the people by the river, the castle and the market. The Friary remained small and poor throughout its history, and was dissolved in 1538. The current Arundel Bridge dates from 1935 when it was rebuilt. There has been a crossing here since the 12th century. Whilst it is believed a small port originated in this area before the Norman Conquest, a proper cross-channel trading post was established by the 16th century. This area, Town Quay, is where the tall ships and barges docked coming up from Little Hampton, carrying everything from coal, timber, chalk and salt. Over the centuries, the quayside grew along the river road, which we're about to walk down. On the corner, the Swan Hotel dates from 1759, a Georgian coaching inn that looks very similar to how it would have back in the 18th century. Arundel boasted 30 public houses and two breweries to quench the thirst of arriving seafarers. Partway down River Road, the sign indicates that we're in the area of Neen Eva shipyard that supported the port in its heyday. It could build or service vessels as large as 300 tonnes, along with hoys, small coastal vessels and sailing barges. It would do this right up to the 19th century, when the port was in decline due to the introduction of the railway. The shipyard's name was linked to a grand house that once stood on the parallel Tarrant Street, its grounds running down to the river. This was demolished and replaced with a chapel in the 19th century, you can still see the rear from River Road, and this is the front from Tarrant Street. It's now used as an antique centre. 
From Roman times until the 16th century, the River Arum was called River Tarrant because the river ran alongside Tarrant Street. There was no river road, that was part of the river, it was much wider back then. Sometimes the road signs give us a clue about the past, and Brewery Hill is where the yards of the Eagle Brewery were once brimming with beer. The Eagle Pub linked to the brewery is still on Tarrant Street. Brewing is once again part of the town, with the award-winning independent Arundel Brewery having been operating since 1992. From Arran Street we cross over Tarrant Street to head up the pretty King's Arms Hill. The pub it's named after resides on the corner, one of a number of quaint drinking holes in Arundel and the oldest opening in 1625. We begin our climb heading for the cathedral in the distance. We cross more Travers Street and continue up Parsons Hill. Don't worry, we will be back later to look at the lovely properties here. After a fairly steep climb, the cathedral comes into view. If we quickly look back, we can see some of the wider landscapes of Arundel. The Grand Arundel Cathedral was originally built as the local parish church for Catholics, paid for by the supportive Henry Fitzalan Howard, the 15th Duke of Norfolk. It was dedicated to the 16th century Italian priest, St Philip Neri, in 1873, making it 150 years old in 2023. The architect was Joseph Hansom, the same man that designed the first horse-drawn cab known as the Hansom Cab, and we know them as taxi cabs today. In 1965 a new diocese was created and the church became a cathedral. It is now served as the seat of the Bishop of Arundel and Brighton. The remains of the martyred 13th Earl of Arundel, St Philip Howard, were brought from the Fitzalan Chapel in the grounds of Arundel Castle and enshrined in the cathedral. The cathedral's dedication was changed to Our Lady and St Philip Howard. The impressive building makes Arundel one of a small number of British towns with a cathedral, as only towns with Protestant cathedrals are considered cities. Stepping inside, the French Gothic style of architecture gives an impressive feel of height, light and space. The height of the nave is 71 feet and 9 inches.
Interestingly, the windows in the nave are not stained glass, which is not something I've seen in a cathedral before. It certainly does allow in more light. If you are interested in learning more about the cathedral, then the website has a very interesting virtual tour covering all areas in great detail. Next to the cathedral is St Mary's Gate Inn. It was built in 1525 during Henry VIII's reign and was used by the Roundheads as a headquarters in the Civil War. It didn't become a pub until 1764, so the King's Arms keeps its title as the oldest pub in Arundel. Heading down London Road towards the centre, we pass St Nicholas Church built in 1380 on the site of two previous churches. It straddles London Road and the grounds of the castle. Inside is the wonderful Fitzalan Chapel that you can see when you visit the castle grounds. Beside the church is Arundel Priory or the college as it was originally known, which was also founded in 1380. It flourished until the dissolution of religious houses in 1538. Badly damaged in the Civil War, it was a ruin for 300 years before restoration saw it have a number of uses, leading up to its current use as a small theatre for the local Arundel players. Across the road is Tower House, the former vicarage built in the early 1800s. It's now been split into two terraced houses. Let's take a quick look at where we've been so far on the map. We'll now take a stroll down Mall Travers Street and see some of the beautiful residential properties. The Baker's Arms pub was situated on Baker's Arms Hill. This beer house closed in the early 1900s and it's now become a pretty grade two listed residential home.
The town hall is on Maltravers Street, just back from the high street that we'll join in a moment. It was built in 1836 by the 12th Duke of Norfolk and designed by Robert Abraham. Its flint and sandstone facade make it a very imposing building. An underground passageway linked the hall to a jailhouse. Built in 1836, the Arundel Town Hall prison was used to house inmates who had been convicted upstairs in the courtrooms. The jail is now a very unique comedy club that I believe is accessed through this alleyway in between the townhouse and the China Palace restaurants. We have now made it to the top of the high street. With the growth of the town it became a busy thoroughfare with a wide range of trades and services including tailors and merchants. The market square would have been bustling with farmers trading cattle here and also in Maltravers Street. Whilst the lovely old buildings remain, their use has changed to independent shops tailored to visitors. Tea rooms, delicatessens, bookshops and a large proportion of antique shops now entice us to spend our money. The Norfolk Arms Hotel, still standing in the town centre, was built in 1783 by the 10th Duke of Norfolk to accommodate traders stopping over for the night. Nothing has changed and you can still book a room for the night or have a drink in this delightful inn. Across the road is Tarrant Street which we've spoken much about but not yet properly seen. This is probably one of my favourite streets as you can enjoy not only the lovely buildings but feast your eyes on some amazing things like these gorgeous cakes at the LG Cafe. As well as sweet treats, you'll find galleries, homeware shops and more antique shops that might be worth a rummage. Midway down we pass the top of Brewery Hill we spoke of earlier and the Eagle Pub linked to the brewery. On the other side of the street is the bottom of Baker's Arms Hill. As the sign says, these were the offices of the brewery. Back on the high street it's worth mentioning that there is an artisan farmers market on the third Saturday of every month, 9am to 1pm. At the bottom of the high street we arrive back at the Arundel Bridge. 
If you want to take a walk by the river, you can do this along the paths shown. We've had a wonderful time wandering the streets of Arundel, but that's just one part of what this town has on offer to enjoy. Tune in next week when we visit the castle. Next time we'll head inside the grounds of Arundel's best attraction with almost a thousand years history. It's one of the most impressive castles in the country, with some wonderful surprises in the gardens and amazing views from high above the castle walls. If you are not subscribed, then do join us now so you don't miss this second instalment in Arundel. Thanks for watching the Memory Seekers.